put forward by the members of the public, they need to be answered, they have been asked, answered. Our job as members of this committee, as elected members of this committee, is to look over these answers, which we have done now, and we have said yes, those answers are fine with us, and we've also said that some of them will also be further answered to the presentations that are going to happen at this committee. Okay? So from that point, these questions will be published. Who do you okay, excuse me, I have not finished. Who do you this, represent? I you represent so oh, sorry, I, I have to so the answers. So the questions you will be published. That's answers. the procedure. But this is the procedure that goes. So from that, this will be published publicly for everyone to see, including members of, of, of public. Thank you. Well, that's the questions and answers. So I don't know if you've got it online, then it's there, it's there, it's awesome. Okay, so once they have been agreed, which they have been agreed. I think it's a miscommunication. I think, I think, I think he thought, wanted to know if it's answered. It's a question of this. I think he thought that it would be discussed. Yeah, One of the questions here, this is why, this is why I started this by saying I understand that there is a lot of frustration from the public and that they want to be agreed, that they want to be included and how can we go about as the council to include the public? Obviously that is, you know, that, that should happen. So therefore I suggested the idea that we have city conversations on climate emergency because we have a structure within the council at the moment that we can utilize the best to bring people together from all walks of life, citizens, residents, residents primarily of Liverpool to discuss issues around climate emergency together, yeah? So I think that should happen as a city conversation. I also mentioned that in Birmingham what they have is citizens' assemblies. And that's another thing that we at the moment don't have, but that's a possibility. I think that city conversations could provide a good vehicle for that. In the meantime, we have these questions that are posed and that the member of cabinet answers and that are then put online for public to look at. Okay, so that's that's the procedure of how it goes. I'm sorry, but my question is not in there, and I sent that in. What's a bit of the day? Chair, Mr. Chair, for clarification, I believe the question concerns the regeneration select committee, not the actual, not this committee, which is the climate change committee. Uh, if that's an error of communication, then maybe we can tie it up. In terms of uh, the questions, some of them were posed to regeneration committee because the, obviously all of these things are interconnected. We are having a regeneration committee on the 19th, which is on Thursday, and some of the questions were passed on the regeneration committee, is my understanding. Laura, do you have uh, any information on that? I understand this council's questions were sent to region and that is on Thursday, so that's when they will get the responses on those because they were about the bus routes, weren't they? Which is technically my even though we tried to cover everything at this committee. My, my question is about the, the climate emergency. I don't know what that's going to be. Well, we got a question for that other committee. Oh, well, my, you know, I mean, I sent it to this committee, but I should go to another committee. I've come to this thing. See the guy with the sign on the end. Just, can we speak again in easy, but by the way of clarification for public and members' presence, the way the city council structure operates in terms of select committee is the same as every local authority, in that each select committee has a, a series of terms of reference and responsibilities which define what the committee can and can't look at, which is why we essentially have eight or nine select committees, each examining different areas of activity within the council, and more often than not, these carry on the activities of the of members. What happens therefore is when reports and documents are received, depending on the subject matter of that issue, it gets referred directly to the relevant select committee. Now on occasion, the perception will be that issues on highways, transport and bus routes and connectivity may be perceived as being, from the public side of things, relevant to environmental matters. However, in terms of our governance structure, it's quite clear that those matters get referred at this point in time to regeneration select. Well, can I ask you, what's the criteria you said that on? Because my, the, the, what I submitted is clearly about the climate emergency. It doesn't mention buses. It doesn't mention something like that. I, I don't see the questions. I'm sorry. I was just trying to be helpful. I thought it might have gone to the other one. Can I ask that people are respectful to our members of staff here, please? 
and respectful to members and also respectful to the chair, who's not only a colleague but she's a comrade as well, please. Okay, maybe now I have another question, just quickly, and um, in light of this plans emergency, are there still plans for another runway at the airport? And also, would you look at it? That's been answered. <coughs> So uh, the amendment that I have written and I would like to move here 
is uh, the amendment that is uh, that says, in addition to everything that uh, Councillor Lawrence Brown has said, so nothing has been uh, deleted from his uh, uh, from his motion, as that with as with all uh, council-led projects, environmental and ecological impact assessment needs to be undertaken, and that this review needs to be ongoing as well, as the cruise liner terminal ought to be held as an example of Green Port nationally and internationally balancing environmental challenges with economic demands. So that we are looking at uh, in, inform the review that should inform future decisions regarding the operation of, uh, of the terminal. And what we wanted to add here is that we will welcome a presentation of this review at one of our future meetings early next year. So this is uh, uh, in terms of the amendment that has been put forward to the motion. Um, now, uh, we have a, 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 the, that the motion is, as uh, amendment to the motion is seconded as well. Does anyone want to add any comments to this? Any thoughts? Yes, please, Council Conception. Okay, yes, thank you, Chair. I support the amendment, obviously. We're all concerned about the climate change and we want to make sure that we can do uh, the very best that we can do to make our city a clean and of course a green port. But some of the, uh, I think the terminology used in the motion by Councillor Brown is really disingenuous, I think. I mean, really, what he's really saying is that before anything's done, we should put a hold on, you know, we've got a new cruise terminal, which for this city is a fantastic opportunity, really. I mean, the tourism industry in this city brings millions and millions of pounds to the city. We need to ensure that they're not only welcome, but we can work with the cruise industry to make sure that whatever uh, impact that we have can be minimised. And at the planning committee, which took place in April last year, I mean, all those things that you uh, talked about, uh, there was an environmental impact assessment, and there was a shadow habitat regulation assessment, and also it was considered by the Mayor's side of Environment Advisory Service. And they are the uh, city's independent experts on env environmental issues, natural England and historic England based on objections. Air quality levels of nitrogen dioxide and particulates does not exceed nationally acceptable limits of any nearby residential or commercial properties. That's what we've been told in planning. Cruise ships could have been used the existing temporary terminal, does not provide any electricity for more vessels. They must use their own engines to provide power. While the current proposal doesn't include any ship to shore power installation, it does have the capacity to do so, should the cruise industry choose to do so. So there's an opportunity there to reduce uh, the impact of the cruise uh, ships that come to the city, because the new facility will be able to uh, encourage them to uh, use this uh, shore to ship uh, power. So I think the amendment is uh, straightforward. We will review as we go forward the impact uh, on the city, on the waterfront uh, to the city. But don't forget, Liverpool is one of the few cities in the world where you can get off a cruise ship in the city centre. It's one of the biggest selling clubs that we have. I mean, I've been there all day, and I've been there welcoming passengers from all over the world. We are a global city, and we don't want to uh, sort of just encourage anybody to come here, but we want to make sure that we can do whatever we can to make sure that we do have a green port and any impact is minimised, so I support the amendment. Do we have any other thoughts on this? Okay, so let's vote on the amendment. All those in favour of accepting the amendment, please raise your hand for the members of the committee. All those against, please raise your hands. Council Brown. Any abstentions? No. The motion as amended is therefore carried. Okay. Thank you. And we are now moving on to item 8. Which is the motion increasing the importance of the natural environment in Liverpool by Council Alan Tormey. Uh, uh, Council Alan Tormey is not here. Do we have someone? Oh, yeah, two. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. So, would you like to speak to the motion? Have already 
already discussed in some context there, but I think I've added a few more extras to some of the things which can be discussed on the webinars, and all the takes away and stuff like that, or the task group and stuff like that. So, in summary, it's mainly revolving around protecting our trees, if you want to elements of their issues there, we're going back to schools and stuff like that with children, appointing uh, district champions for trees and certain parts of the uh, healthy areas and stuff like that. Um, also, also looking for funding streams with regards from national governments and stuff like that, uh, Westminster, with regards to how we can also get funding for planting of trees. Um, moving on, there's another element on the pesticides and declaring the point pesticide free authority. We are currently, I believe we are partly there, but there's still a bit more to, to go on that. Um, um, we did mention before the um, habitat for the gardens, the um, what the term was used, the wildflowers and things like that. There's a green flower in the park to the way alongside that, mainly local and sustainable plants from local nurseries and you know, what was around those areas. And one of the main ones that I don't think we discussed here was the uh, advice to planning applicants in relation to possibly bringing their planning applications and possibly setting aside a guidance or maybe an input for advising uh, for all applicants that are going to make their applications more believable uh, so that can be extension of people's houses, etc., business changes and stuff like that. Um, and also the opportunity to collect with water from plants and etc. etc. and so on and so on and stuff. Um, so that's pretty much a bit of a summary there. Okay? Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. And are you in agreement that this motion is then taken up by the task group of the uh, built and the natural uh, environment and that we uh, discuss that there and move it forward with in the action points. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. It can probably more than likely be broken down because it's enforced at the top of each of the relevant task groups to make it easier. So that's why I presented it that way in the first place. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we are moving that to uh, uh, four task groups of, of, the, uh, of this uh, committee and that we are going to take those points there. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we are in agreement with that. And uh, we finally reached the end, and that is the dates of the fourth family committee, and they are the, on the Monday, 3rd of February, and that is going to be also taking place here on that Monday, March 23rd, and also taking place here. Thank you very much for your attendance and for your patience.